Okay, so this problem is going to ask you to think about a lot of different things. So I'm going to walk through it slowly and we're just going to go one piece at a time. The first decision you have to make is what kind of a shop do you own? I chose pie. And you're going to imagine your most basic, in my situation, pie, costs you $5 to make. You must decide how many equal pieces to cut each pie into and how much you will charge for one piece. How much money do you earn each time you sell a whole pie? The extension is basically to go through the same problem again using different numbers, uh, but the example I'm going to walk through is just going to go through the first part of the problem. A good place to start with any problem is to ask yourself the question, what do I already know or what information does the question already give me? Uh, because that's going to be key in finding out the information that we don't know at the end of the problem. So think for a moment now and say, from reading that problem, what information do I already have? So I want you to just read the question once more carefully and see if you can find the one really important piece of information they give you. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. So we know for sure that it costs $5 to make one pie. The rest is up to you. So now we ask, what do we need to know, or what information does the question ask from us? So I'm going to show you the question one more time, and I'm going to ask you to think about it for about 10 seconds, or once again, if you need to, give it a pause. So the question asks us to decide how many pieces will I cut? And how much will I charge for each piece? So we're going to go one question at a time. And we're going to think about how many pieces will I cut. So let's use proper names of fractions in order to do this. So say, for instance, we wanted to cut it into quarters or fourths. What would that look like? Well, as you hear right in the name, fourths tells you that's four pieces. You might try sixth, also, which kind of gives itself away by its name. Sixth would be divided into six equal pieces. You might try eighths, which also tells you exactly how many pieces. But before we get there, remember this guy from just a moment ago? Those are fourths, and watch what happens. If we just add two more lines in there, we get double the number of pieces, and then we have eighths. And it's always a good idea in math just to be extra sure and check your numbers. So we've talked about quarters or fourths, sixths and eighths, and those all kind of look like ways you might have seen cake or pizza or pie sliced up. So I'm wondering if you can think of any other ways that I might not have mentioned. I'm wondering if anybody is thinking, Mr. Comber, you didn't mention halves. Um, and I did that partly because you don't often see pizzas, pies, or cakes being sold this way, and partly because I think we'll end up with more interesting math problems if we choose other fractions. Uh, but certainly, that is one that you might have thought of. So once you've made your selection for question number one, we turn our attention to question number two, which is how much do we charge for each piece? And that part is entirely up to you, but you need to make sure that you're charging enough to earn money. So we'll take a look. Maybe you charge $5 for each piece. That's a little pricey, but maybe it's that good. Maybe $1.25, that's quite reasonable. Three fifty. dollars why not? Maybe you want to charge $1,000 for your pie, but no. You're not allowed to charge a thousand dollars. That's too much. So here's one more fraction that I didn't talk about in the example, and this is the one I've decided to use for my pie. So it's also a challenge question for you. What is the name of that fraction? And being in three parts is a little bit of a hint about its name.
So I have decided to cut my pie in thirds and charge $2.25 each per slice. And now I'm going to hand it over to video Mr. Comber to demonstrate how you might go about adding that up. So from here we have to start doing some arithmetic and we'll add those numbers together. Uh, it depends on how you want to add the money up. I know you guys have had some experience with this already. For me, I'm going to do my dollars and my cents separately. So I see that I've got two dollars, two dollars, and two dollars. Well, that's pretty easy. I know that gives me six dollars altogether. And I see that I've got 25 cents three times as well. And I remember how to skip count by 25. So I'm just going to go 25 and 25 is 50. And another 25 gets me to 75. And if I wanted to do top to bottom adding, I could also go 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. Whoops. Sorry for bumping you there. So the 5 goes to the bottom. It's 15. So the 1 in the tens place comes up. Now I have 1 plus 2 is 3. Plus 2 more is 5. Plus 2 more is 7. Nothing to add over here. The decimal for the cents comes down the same way. 0, and that gives me the same answer. Now I have to combine my $6 with my 75 cents, so there's my grand total. And now I can move to the last stage of the question. So we know that it costs $5 for us to make one pie. We figured out that we earn six seventy-five each time we sell one. So this might be a time you want to get out your money manipulatives and figure it out that way. Or you can just do, once again, uh, direct subtraction. So I'm going to try it that way. So I'm going to put 675 on top. I'm going to just make room for the decimal place there. Subtraction sign. I'm going to leave the dollar signs out till the very end. And I'm, so I've brought in $6.75, but it cost me $5 to make, so... I've lost five dollars, but I've gained six seventy-five. You need this number to be bigger. If you end up with a smaller number, then your pie or your pizza or your cake store is not going to make money. So now we're going to just go from smallest to biggest, from ones to tens. We can remember we've got the ones column, the tens column, and the hundreds column, if that's helpful. So in the ones, five take away zero. Remembering also that this line. It also is the same as an equal sign when we're doing top to bottom. So I could be saying, it's kind of a side note, but if I were saying 675 minus $5 equals, the equal sign turns into one long line here. So 5, take away 0, easy, because it doesn't change. Now I move to the tens, 7, take away 0, still easy. And I'm going to make sure to remember the decimal stays in the same spot. 6 take away 5, also pretty easy. 1, so each time I sell a pie, I earn $1.75. I hope I sell a lot of pies.